Let me ask you a question that might feel a little uncomfortable. How much of your life have you sold for a hit of cheap chemicals in the last 24 hours? I'm not talking about illegal substances. I'm talking about the screen in your pocket. I'm talking about the refined sugar in your pantry. I'm talking about the endless, infinite loop of novelty that defines modern existence. You are intelligent. You are ambitious. You have goals that keep you awake at night. Empires you want to build. Skills you want to master. A body you want to sculpt. And yet, day after day, you find yourself trapped in a cycle of paralysis. You know exactly what you need to do, but you feel physically unable to do it. You sit down to work, and five minutes later your hand moves automatically to your phone. It feels like a reflex. It feels like you are possessed. Most people call this laziness. They call it a lack of willpower. But here at the brain line, we don't deal in moral judgments. We deal in biological realities. You are not lazy. You are chemically hijacked. You are living in a biological machine that evolved for a world of scarcity. Yet you are operating in a world of infinite abundance. Your brain is a survival engine, and for 200,000 years, survival meant conserving energy and seeking high-calorie, high-reward stimuli. But today, that same survival mechanism is the architect of your own prison. You are drowning in a neurotransmitter called dopamine, and because you are drowning in it, you are starving for motivation. It is the ultimate paradox of the 21st century. We have never had more stimulation, yet we have never felt more empty. In this video, we are going to dismantle the myths surrounding the dopamine detox. We are going to move beyond the superficial advice of just put your phone away and dive into the deep neurophysiology of your reward system. We are going to hand you the five pillars of neurochemical calibration. This is not just about stopping a bad habit. This is about rewiring the physical structure of your brain so that hard work no longer feels like suffering, but actually feels like the reward itself. By the end of this analysis, you will have the blueprint to turn discipline from a constant battle into your default setting. Before we can fix the machine, we have to understand the fuel. There is a fundamental misunderstanding about dopamine that ruins most people's people's attempts at productivity. Pop psychology tells you that dopamine is the pleasure molecule. You eat chocolate, you get dopamine, you feel good. That is wrong. If dopamine were just about pleasure, the addict would stop using the moment the drug stopped feeling good. But they don't. They continue long after the pleasure is gone and only the misery remains. Why? Because dopamine is not the molecule of having. It is the molecule of wanting. The neuroscientist Dr. Andrew Huberman and researchers like Wolfram Schultz have shown us that dopamine is the driver of action. It is the engine of craving craving, searching, and seeking. It is designed to narrow your focus on a specific goal and give you the energy to pursue it. In a natural environment, this system is perfect. You get hungry, dopamine rises, you hunt, you eat, dopamine drops, and serotonin takes over to give you satisfaction. But in our modern environment, we have hacked this system. Social media, video games, and pornography are what we call supernormal stimuli. They provide a spike of dopamine that is biologically impossible in nature. When you scroll through TikTok or Instagram, you are blasting your nucleus accumbens, the brain's pleasure center, with rapid-fire hits of reward without any effort. Here is the consequence, and this is the crucial part, homeostasis. Your brain seeks balance. If you blast it with huge spikes of dopamine, your brain panics. To protect itself from overstimulation, it downregulates your receptors. It essentially turns down the volume. This means your baseline level of dopamine drops. When your baseline is low, you feel lethargic, unmotivated, and anxious. Normal tasks, like reading a book, writing a report, or going to the gym, don't release enough dopamine to even register on your fried receptors. The hard work isn't just hard, it is biologically invisible to your motivation system. You are functionally blind to the rewards of discipline. So, the dopamine detox is not about punishing yourself. It is about upregulating your receptors. It is about reclaiming your sensitivity so that the simple act of making progress on a goal feels just as good as a high score in a video game used to feel. Let's look at the five pillars to achieve this reset. To fix a computer that is glitching, you don't just close a few windows you reboot the system. Pillar number one is the 48-hour hard reset. Most people try to taper off their addictions. They say, I'll just use Instagram for 30 minutes a day instead of four hours. This rarely works because the neural pathways are too deep. You need a shock to the system to break the pattern of automaticity. For 48 hours, you are going to enter a state of what we call theoretical deprivation. The rules are simple but brutal. No social media, no video games, no digital entertainment, Netflix, YouTube, no music with lyrics, no highly processed sugary foods. What are you allowed to do? You can write, you can read physical physical books. You can exercise. You can meditate. You can walk. You can drink water and eat whole foods. Here is what will happen, and you need to be prepared for it. You will feel bored. Intense, 
painful boredom. You will feel an itch in your brain, a phantom vibration in your pocket. This is not a bad sign. This is the kind withdrawal of the cheap chemical. This is your brain screaming for its pacifier. By depriving yourself of the supernormal stimuli, you force your brain to look for dopamine elsewhere. Suddenly, after 24 hours of staring at a wall or walking in silence, the idea of cleaning your room or writing that essay starts to sound appealing. Why? Because it is the only source of dopamine available. You are artificially lowering the floor of stimulation so that work becomes the new ceiling. You are resensitizing your palate for effort. Once the reset is complete, you cannot simply return to your old environment. Your environment is stronger than your willpower. This brings us to pillar number two, the friction coefficient. The human brain is an energy conserving machine. It will always choose the path of least resistance. If your phone is on your desk while you work, even if it is face down, your brain is expending energy, ignoring it. This is a cognitive leak. If you want to stop scrolling in the morning, do not charge your phone by your bed. Charge it in the kitchen. Make it so that you have to physically get up, walk across a cold floor, and unplug it just to check a notification. That tiny bit of friction is often enough to break the autopilot loop. Conversely, if you want to write, leave your laptop open to the document with the internet disconnected the night before. Lower the activation energy required to start the right behavior. You want to act as the architect of your life so that the inhabitant of your life, which is the lazy, primitive part of your brain, stumbles into success by accident. Don't rely on discipline in the moment. Rely on design in advance. Pillar number three is perhaps the most counterintuitive. It is based on the concept of hormesis. To get more dopamine, you shouldn't chase pleasure. You should chase pain. Dr. Anna Lembeke, author of Dopamine Nation, explains that pleasure and pain are processed in overlapping regions of the brain and work like a balance scale. When you press hard on the pleasure side, binge watching TV, the brain eventually snaps the scale back to the pain side to restore balance. This is the come down or the apathy you feel afterward. But the reverse is also true. If you intentionally press on the pain side, the brain will reflexively tip the scale toward pleasure to restore balance. This is why you feel amazing after a freezing cold shower or euphoric after a brutal workout. This is the secret weapon of the high performer. Use high friction activities to generate a neurochemical rebate of dopamine. If you are feeling sluggish and unmotivated, do not look for a snack or a funny video to wake you up. That is a trap. Instead, do 20 push-ups, take a cold shower, engage in intense physiological stress for a short burst. This triggers the release of dopamine and norepinephrine that is more sustained and more steady. It gives you a clean fuel source for mental focus that lasts for hours rather than the jittery spike and crash of sugar or social media. Train your brain to understand that the only path to the good feeling is through the gate of effort. The hardest part of any task is the first five minutes. This is where limbic friction is highest. This is pillar number four. Your limbic system, the emotional brain, screams, no, this is boring, this is hard. Your prefrontal cortex, the logical brain, says, we need to do this. The battle is intense. Most people wait to feel like working. This is a fatal error. You will never feel like doing something difficult if your dopamine baseline is messed up. You must decouple action from feeling. The strategy here is the five minute rule. You tell yourself, I will do this task for just five minutes. If I hate it after five minutes, I can stop. Here is the neurological magic. Once you engage in the task, your brain releases a small amount of dopamine for task initiation. Then, as you make tiny bits of progress, you get more micro doses of dopamine. This creates a positive feedback loop. The friction disappears and you enter what psychologists call flow. But you cannot enter flow if you are standing on the shore waiting for the water to warm up. You have to jump in. You have to force the first five minutes. The just start protocol is the admission that motivation often follows action, not the other way around. Finally, pillar number five. This is where we move from hacks to permanent transformation. We need to shift your source of dopamine from external consumption to internal identity. In the beginning, you need tricks. You need the cold showers and the phone lock boxes. But eventually, you want the source of your dopamine to be the stimulus image of yourself. When a disciplined person refuses a donut, they don't feel deprived. They feel a hit of satisfaction. Why? Because that refusal reinforces their identity as a healthy, disciplined individual. Every time you do the hard thing, you cast a vote for the person you want to become. You need to learn to subjectively reward the effort itself. When you are studying and it feels painful, you must mentally reframe that pain. Tell yourself, this pain is the feeling of my neurons forging new connections. This struggle is the feeling of weakness leaving my body. By intellectually associating the strain with growth, you can actually trigger dopamine release during the difficulty. This is what David Goggins talks about. This is what elite athletes do. They don't just tolerate the burn, they crave it because they have rewired their brain to interpret the burn as evidence of success you must become an alchemist, turning the lead of suffering into the gold of self-respect. We are living in a time
time where focus is the new IQ. In an economy where everyone is distracted, the person who can sit in a chair and work deeply for four hours without interruption is a superhuman. The dopamine detox is not a lifestyle of misery. It is a trade. You are trading the cheap, jittery, fleeting pleasure of the consumer for the deep, slow-burning, profound satisfaction of the creator. You are trading the high of the like button for the high of mastery. The path isn't easy. Your brain will fight you. It will scream for its old habits. But now you know why. You know it's just a chemical calibration error. You have the tools, the hard reset, the friction management, the pain-pleasure balance, and the identity shift. The world belongs to those who can control their own attention. The only question remaining is, are you the master of your chemistry, or are you the victim of it? The choice and the responsibility is yours. So, here is my challenge to you for this week. I want you to pick one source of cheap dopamine that you know is holding you back. Maybe it's TikTok, maybe it's video games, maybe it's the morning news. I want you to eliminate it for just seven days. Replace that time with a high friction activity. Then, come back to this video and comment below. Tell us what you removed and tell us how your focus changed. Let's build a database of evidence right here in the comments. If you found value in this deep dive, if you are tired of the surface level noise and want true signal, hit that like button and subscribe to The Brain Line. We are building a community of critical thinkers and ambitious learners, and we want you on the front lines. Until next time, stay focused.